Hello and welcome to the Bober Academy Football Podcast. We are excited to bring back our Lineman of the Week series here for the 2022 season where we're going to be highlighting great offensive line play throughout the Omaha metro area and surrounding areas. We're going to bring um, high school offensive linemen onto the show and their coaches and talk about their season, what they're doing, and everything to do with offensive line play. This podcast is brought to you by the Bober Academy. I started the Bober Academy in 2019 with the mission to train and develop superior linemen to dominate on the gridiron. I'm your host, Chris Bober, eight-year NFL veteran. I've started games in the NFL at every offensive line position, and I love dealing with anything to do with football, especially the offensive line. Now, if you are listening to this podcast we're on, on your podcast app, just be sure to click the subscribe button. So make sure that you're getting notified of our weekly shows. We do a lot of different shows out there. Also, if you're watching us on YouTube, click the little button down there to subscribe to our channel and also the notification bell. We, we would love your comments um, and your feedback. And if, if you're seeing this anywhere out there on social media, feel free to like, share, retweet, comment, whatever goes on out there in the social media world. We want to spread the message of great offensive line play. So thank you for joining us. Let's get to the show. All right, so welcome back into the Boulder Academy Football Podcast Studio. Um, it's our Lineman of the Week feature, and it's our championship edition. And we are joined today by the starting O-line for the Bennington Badgers, the undefeated Bennington Badgers, who are headed off down to Memorial Stadium next week to play the Gross Cougars, another undefeated team. Guys, congratulations on going undefeated again. You know, you guys did it last year. And you're able to pull it off this year. How's it? Um, how's it feel to be undefeated going into the championship? Feels feels really good. Yeah, yeah. Last excited. year, yeah. yeah. Last year, a lot of us weren't really like we didn't really play a lot, so I didn't really feel like we like did as much as the rest of the line. Yeah, you guys are yeah. making your own own mark finally, huh? Well, mm-hmm. let's, let's. So you know. Why don't you guys go around and we'll introduce ourselves and, you know, your year and position you play because you guys are five new starters coming from last year's undefeated team. And, of course, you picked off right where they left off. But why don't you go around and introduce yourself, kind of the year and what position you play. Oh, well, we'll start I'll start with Tyler at the top. Who wants to oh, stop? Yeah, yeah we're, right, going, right, we're going right. over. Tyler's at the top. We'll go around. All right. So I play right guard. I'm a senior. So this is my first year starting. I got some um, experience last year just um, with practice with the varsity squad. I've got a few reps in the game with this. Sweet. First year starting. All right. I'm I'm the second, Tyler, and I'm a senior. Um, I play left tackle. This is my first year starting. And pretty much last year, only experience came late in games and then just mm-hmm. those practice reps against varsity guys. Cool, man. <laughs> Your mic's speeded. Or am I going? Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy. you want to go. All right, my bad. Uh, I'm Jimmy. I play left guard. Uh, I'm junior. And just like both the Tylers, I only really got refs late in the game. But instead, it was at D end, not on the line. Cool, cool, cool. All right, talk to the young guys now. Uh, I'm Jack. I'm a sophomore. Um, right tackle. My, I had a little bit of experience last year. I got to suit up varsity. I went. I also went at DM like one time, and that's it. Cool. Yeah, I'm uh, Jacob. I'm the center, and uh, I my only experience last year was freshman, uh, playing freshman football. So that's about it. Nice, nice, nice. Well, that's awesome. So we got a couple seniors, a junior, and two sophomores. So a little bit more diversity this year. The last year when you guys had five seniors and I knew several of those guys really well. I know Jack really well. I work with Jack in the off season. Um, okay guys. So tell me, um, you know, there's quite a legacy that Bennington's building here, but their offensive line last year, uh, was pretty, pretty renowned, you know, all seniors, what, uh, you know, they all left and you guys are filling their shoes, doing a great job, obviously. But, you know, what was it like trying to fill the shoes of, you know, Kroneski and Steyer and those guys up front who, had done so well for for the Badgers after after they left their senior year. Me and you well, got it. Was just, yeah. All right. Yeah. It, you know, it was just it was the next next man up mentality. You know, we, you know, it's just we were the next guys up. We were the, you know, 
best pick for the position. So, um, you know. Our uh, coach Lenhart really liked to stress that, like, me, me's going to ramble on there, but coach Lenhart liked to stress that we, we look at the next, next year forward. And we really didn't like to look back on that. I mean, they did great things and we talked about it, but we just wanted to stray away from it and do what we do best. Yeah. You were talking about like no rebuilding years and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was like a little stressful too, you know, filling those shoes. But now that it's later in the season, we feel pretty comfortable at what we do and we're starting to work really hard. It's going great. Nice, nice. Especially coming in as a couple sophomores in there, um, getting your, your feet wet, playing against varsity competition. You know, and I, I noticed one thing you guys do, and this is very, very rare, is you guys only play O-line, right? I mean, because, you know, I noticed the coach, you know, I had him on the podcast with Tyler earlier in the year, and, you know, you guys just made a decision that you're going to go one way. And I think that that's such an advantage for you guys. Uh, not only do you only have to worry about playing offensive line, you get, you get double the practice time. You get to go against the ones a lot. And then in the third and fourth quarter, um, you guys are fresh. You know, another advantage I saw out there is, you know, if a defense throws something at you that you haven't seen before, well, all five of you and the entire offense is on the sidelines to make that adjustment quicker. You know, so tell me about, you know, what it was like to, to be a, kind of a rarity in high school football and then play only one way. Well, how, how do you think that's helped you guys? And um, what, what what kind of experience do you have with that? Well, it's uh, it's very helpful, actually. You know, like you said, you get, like, a lot of time to rest in between, you know, uh, drives. And you also, like, after it, when we come out of offense, we'll huddle up around Bradburn and look over plays and see what we did wrong and what we did right. And it really helps, you know, to make like in-game adjustments way just that much faster. And we are usually, you know, we can usually just change stuff for the next drive and be ready to, you know, come back even mm -hmm. better than we were the last drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of times you can tell, like, there's some D linemen that we play against that they play both ways. And you can tell by the fourth quarter that they're a little bit tired compared to us. Yeah. Yeah, and like even – Sometimes it doesn't even have to wait until the fourth quarter for it to take effect. Like, mm -hmm. you can see if no one's really moving the ball too well and it's punts back and forth, um, they'll get tired before us, and then we can put a drive together, score, and get things clicking, and then it just builds from there. And then, like you said, in practice, we're going against ones almost the entire time, and, and our ones are really good. We have mm -hmm. Ethan, Weston, and then Kale and Grant, and they're – they're one of the best D lines we're going to see. Nice. I, I noticed that you guys um, really dominate in the third quarter, you know, as, as the, the game wears on. And I remember I, I watched you guys, I did your game against Elkhorn on TV and I've seen you guys play other games and it seems like, you know, you guys come and running out fresh, you're all cheered up, ready to go. And the, the guys on the other side really just get maybe a, a drink of Gatorade and they got to run right back out there. So, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Your coach does that. It's, well, why don't you tell me a little bit about your coach and, and your experience with him? Coach Leonard has only been there a few years, but he's only lost a couple, two games in, in the years he's been there. And, and what he's doing is working. But what do you think he brings to the table as a head coach? So why, why you guys are so successful? Well, like he, energy of practice is super he, high. He doesn't you know, really he's a really problem. fun person to be around. Yeah, yeah he, a lot of energy. Go ahead. He's a lot of like he's got a lot sayings of, and a lot of great like values he brings with him. Okay, let's we'll let the Tyler Tyler <laughs> Tyler wants to talk. He, he's a little delayed. We'll let Tyler talk. Then when we get to the other guys. Yeah, sorry. but yeah, I mean, he's just he brings a lot of great values. Um, you know, he's a good leader. You know, among us because we've um, you know we've got our unit leader system. So me and Jimmy were the unit leaders on the O line, but you know he sets a good example for us and kind of helps coach us through how we're supposed to, you know, what we can do to help out our teammates and then you know just on top of that i think um he does a really good job of just creating a winning culture um doing the little things right really stressing that and then also just you know making sure we're confident and we're prepared for every message we face nice so who's talking about his sayings he has some sayings why don't you share with us a couple of, a couple of sayings yeah he has. you know like he's always like to get us focused up he's like where are we and everyone's goes right here right now like oh. together we win and yeah stuff like that 
Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cheesy when you talk about it, but you know, when you're mm-hmm. out in the middle of it, it, it kind of gets you guys in the right mind frame, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just nice, goes dead guys, silent when he asks, "Where are we?" Yeah, it's kind of kind of your your focus to get back on there. That that's pretty cool, especially for you guys. You know, you guys are all new starters, and um, you know his leadership has been been a big deal. Um, all right, let's talk about this season, right? So, I think people will assume that every game is just easy for you guys, but you know, football's not like that, right? And you and you won every game by two touchdowns, but I've seen your games. It's not always that you just go out to a big lead and you just kind of walk through the games. Um, how do you feel like you guys have progressed as the season went on? You not only as um, a team, but more more importantly as a as a unit, as an offensive line unit. I'll take oh. this. I'll take this. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, I I think like not even like on the field, like off the field, we used to never like start of season. We didn't talk to each other at all, and now. We're, we're taking time out of our day. We go hang out with each other. Like me, Strader, and Jansen just went to – or tried to go to the new church's chicken. Didn't work out too well, but we did. But, uh, yeah, and then that, that really helps on the field. Our communication has increased a lot, yeah. especially last game. Uh, Waverly was – they were throwing a lot at us. They like bringing that number nine mm-hmm. linebacker up. It pretty much makes it a 5-5 five, five, or 5 one, it's it's a weird defense, but I mean, yeah. we had to talk through it. Full man slide, we switched things up, and I think that bonding really helped. Yeah. Nice. Anyone else got something about your line and you know, kind of how your season's gone on? It feels like you know, you guys aren't rookies anymore, right? You guys have played enough mm-hmm. now where you should, they kind of expect more out of you, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, they do expect a lot out of us during practice and in games. Nice. <clears throat> Very nice. Um, well, you know, let me talk. I want to talk real quick about your offense, right? Because, again, playing one way, I think it gives you guys an advantage of that you can have an offense that's very balanced. And what I want, when I watch you guys play, I've seen you play in person, I've watched you on your clips, and it seems like you guys run a little bit of everything. So, the, for the people that are listening and watching, you know, Bennington has a very unique offense in the terms that you really can't get a beat on what they do, they run pure empty. Right, you got five linemen, four receivers, one running back, and a quarterback. And out of that, you guys run the ball really well. You run a lot of guard tackle counters, you run traps, you run inside zone RPOs. Um, in the pass game, you'll drop back, you'll roll out. Um, very proficient at the, the short, the quick passing game, which is kind of like a longer run. Um, how do you guys feel about your offense? You know, do you feel like the diversity gives you guys an advantage, or would you rather just line up and run the ball? What, what do you guys think? You know, at the start of the season, when uh, they used to do, you know, call pass plays out of run sometimes, that would get us. But now that we got it, like, now we're used to it and we know what to do. We figure it all out. I, I know I really like it. It's it's just I feel like it's uh, really powerful and it just, you know, it's 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 a good way to run offense. Yeah, I think it does a great job, you know. The RPOs and all the stuff we can do out of just one formation really does a good job of making sure the defense stays wrong no matter what, and they can't really key in on just one thing. You know, they can tackle the dive on a run play, and Trey can keep it and run, or he can throw it out of there, and just you really can't be right consistently against us. And with that, like – with all these plays, you need a good offensive coordinator to be out there and, like, make the calls. And sometimes I'm looking down, and we get a call in from Coach Bird, and I'm looking down, and I'm like, this play's just got to work. And then next thing I know, I'm running down the field uh, <laughs> watching Nick Colbert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really, really hard to get a beat on you guys. Um, you got you know, players, but... <laughs> I know I kind of jumped in there, but you know, it's, it's really hard to get a beat on what you guys do. You know, I've, I've studied you guys. I watched you do it and you guys leave and throw in some option in there. You know, and at that Elkhorn game, you're an option for a big play and then you ran an option pass out of it, which was amazing. Cause I'd never seen a high school quarterback make a throw like that, but, but let's focus in here, maybe on your quarterback. I mean, you guys got a pretty special guy that you're protected back there in, in Trey bird, who um, runs the RPO off offense as good as any quarterback high school quarterback I've seen. It seems like he's, like you said, they're all, the defense is always wrong because if they choose to take something away, well, he's quick enough and smart enough to 
pull the ball and hit the quick pass. Um, he also, I mean, he, he's not just a passer. Like he, he runs the ball. You guys run quarterback uh, counter. Um, you'll run him. And, and then it seems like, you know, if he gets any sort of pressure, he loves to roll out and to get the ball down the field too. So what's it like blocking for, for Trey and what, what does he bring to your guys' offense? Yeah, like he's a real he's really good at running out of the pocket. Like some of the stuff he does just it amazes mm-hmm. me. He runs so hard too. Like he runs hard like a running back and he's not afraid to make contact. It's just it's really rewarding. I I, I like it a lot. It's awesome. Yeah, it's good to know like so if we're, if I'm not sure on a play, I know he'll be, he'll find a way to make make a gain out of it. Yeah. Like those guys in the backfield, I feel like just bring a lot of trust in the backfield to our O-line, which just allows us to exceed. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you know, O-line makes the running backs look good and the quarterbacks, but um, the quarterbacks and, and skill players make the O-line look good too, right? It's kind of a yeah. kind of a team effort in that, and you guys are very balanced in that. Um, you know, so Trey does so much for you guys. He has great relationships with the receivers. You guys put four out all the time. I know Connor's the one they talked about, but you guys got a lot of dudes on the edge that make plays too. And it's it's one of those things where it frustrates defenses because you keep on hitting those quick short passes, and then Trey gives that little shoulder fake. And they do a double move, and, and they're wide open down the field. So it, it's hard for defenses to stop. Um, you know, let's talk about your your running back, right? So last year, you know, Dylan Mostak was like a three thousand yard guy, one of the one of the the most heralded running backs ever in the state in Class B, definitely. So you, you think you might be a little bit of a drop off, but you know, Nick Colbert steps in. And he's pretty darn good too, right? So tell me about Nick. Right. You know, I know he's not a stretch guy like you know maybe Dylan was. Um, you know, he was more of an inside guy, and then bounce it out. But tell me about you know your running back. Offensive line usually have a good rapport with their running back. But tell me what what um, what Culver brings to the table. Yeah, he's got great vision. Is one thing. Um, but you know when we can get a hold or like a crease man on the line, he does a really good job of seeing that quick and just getting a quick burst of speed and just making getting big yards out of it. Even if it's you know he is a good. He can read the blocks well, and he relies on us. Um, and it's just led us to break off some really big runs this year. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's really shifty too. Like he can make guys miss, and it just makes our jobs a lot easier, which is awesome. Yeah, it helps 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 to have a guy like that. And um, you know what I've seen from him is that he can score from anywhere. You know, if you guys are backed up, all of a sudden he pops out of there. And you know he's not a a big dude. But he can run through tackles, and with that spread offense, you know he doesn't. You can't really key in on him, so it's a lot of one to one one tackles, and he's very very hard to bring down one to one, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. He is. He runs hard. Yeah, he's he, he's one of the best out there. Big advantage for you guys. Um, okay, so uh, you guys have kind of went through your season, and you've done well. You know, but the Waverly game, I think, was a little closer than people realized last week. It seems like they gave you guys quite a battle. Why don't, why don't you guys tell me kind of how that game went? I know you got up on them, but they fought back pretty hard. How'd that game go for you guys? You know, like like uh, pregame the week before or, or like the week of practice, we really were working on picking up that number nine, you know, because we were told he's really good and he just runs hard and he's going to shoot you know, in our gaps, especially mine. And we worked on that and worked hard and it really paid off. But like during the game, yeah, they were, they were hard. They fought hard and, you know, they run to the ball, like, which is, Mm -hmm. you know, something that some teams do a lot, but they, they've done it the best that I've ever seen. They just, you like, you'll have a guy from the back make a tackle. It's, you just gotta, just makes your job just a little bit harder, but you, you know, practice hard and got through it. Yeah, they definitely had the best team pursuit that we've seen. And we were practicing against their five front pretty much all week, and then they yeah. switched to a 4-3. So we had to make some in-game adjustments, which kind of slowed things down. And we definitely had some missed opportunities in the game. But I feel like as the game went on, we got better and better, and we were just deciding to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And yeah, that – Things went well. That drive at one of the ends, like with the counters, was really good. That was good. Yeah, a team that likes to shoot gaps like that, if you can catch them in those down blocks 
um, you can really crease them like that. So it sounds like, you know, they did what they've done all year, which is just bring pressure. They basically said, we're going to bring pressure and, and try to create some big plays. And, you know, while, while sometimes they're going to guess right, um, you know, you got to kind of make them wrong, like you said. Um, but that was, that was a big victory going up against those guys. But then you guys c- coming into this week, you know, and we're early in the week. We're going to push this out here later in the week before the game. But, you know, you got you got another tough opponent this week, an undefeated Gross Catholic. And, you know, I watch Gross, and I work with a lot of their guys too. Um, they kind of remind me of kind of what Elkhorn is, you know, big, tough, physical dudes up front, both offense and defense. They, they throw the ball a little bit more. But um, what, what do you guys think coming into playing the other undefeated team in Class B? You know, what are your what are your feelings going into this game? Obviously, you're not going to tell me your game plan, but you know, what's your mentality going up against another undefeated team? It isn't going to be easy. It's going to be rough, but you know, we just got to work hard during practice this week and just play our hearts out during the game. That's what you know. At least that's what my plan is. I don't know about anyone else here, but. You know, play hard, physical. Yeah, there's probably going to be a lot of adversity during the game, but that's what we've been dealing with all season. That's what, like, Leonard preaches. We just got to be able to face it and get through it. Nice, nice. You know, they, um, they're um, they not going to – I don't think they're going to change who they are. Um, so you kind of probably know what they're going to be, where they're going to be lined up and they're going to try to just kind of beat you across the football and, um, try to win the line of scrimmage. And that's, that's kind of what, what they want to do. Um, now how about, you know, you guys were on the championship team last year, obviously contributing, um, way more this year, but, uh, you know, what's it like going down to play a state championship game, Memorial stadium, you know, did you have a little bit, maybe advantage cause you, you, you've already been there. Um, and you, you know what this week is like and, and what it's like to go down and play on the, on the big field. Uh, it's exciting. I'm excited. I, you yeah. know, me and Jansen at the end of the year last year, just kind of looked at each other and said that we want to come back and do it again. And, you know, actually do something for the team. I know both me and him are really excited just to actually, you know, hopefully give our team another state championship and be a part of it this time. Mm-hmm. How about I you, you know, you seniors talk, talk about, hard. talk about going down there. You've been down there a couple of times. Tell me, tell me what it's like down there. Me, do you want it? <laughs> you guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I'm not, I hope I'm not thinking too bad. But, um, yeah, with, you know, we've been there before. Um, I think we're confident that we can um, just execute our stuff and um, be successful again. But I know just with being there in the past, it's helped us, you know, not be as nervous and be more prepared, knowing what to do going into this week. Um, and I think it's going to help us in our preparation for the game. Nice. Nice. How about you other senior Tyler over there? Do you give me a- um yeah, I think being there already definitely helps cuz it's just being down there, the sheer size of the stadium, the bright lights, all the like banners and numbers up there and stuff, you know, kind of gives leaves you starstruck, but once you've seen that once, you only need to absorb it all in the second time cuz you've already been there and you can just show up locked in for the game right away. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of fans there, things like that. But um, you're not there for the fans; you're there to win a football game, right? Right. You know, yeah. And you know, do they call you the other Tyler or t- Tyler Two? Uh, no, we go by last names. So. Oh, there like, you go. Yeah. Well, I, most people know me by my last name. You know, if you, if you knew me back when I played football, people still call me Bober instead of my first name. But um, yeah. Now that we're kind of on the fun side of it, guys. I mean, we got the whole line here. You know, give me some something funny, something about your old line that you know maybe people out there want to see or hear. You know, any funny stories? I mean, you got to keep this PG here. But um, uh, you know, tell me something that's happened with you guys. You guys are a tight group. I can tell. I want to hear some stories though. Yeah, <laughs> Jansen and me are like yeah, Batman and Joker. And that's what we like. <laughs> nice. Well, okay. We'll let Tyler. We'll let Tyler one. <laughs> Tyler me talk. The senior. Let you know. Go, you know, tell me about these. You got a couple of kind of young guys think that they're kind of, you know, they like to talk a little bit there. What, what, what are those guys like? Yeah, I mean, they're they're fun to be around, especially, you know, just outside of football. They got a lot of energy um, and they're, they're plenty of entertaining, but um, they're just, you know, they, they can be silly, but, you know, when it comes to football, I mean, we all just, we're all kind of just different on the field. We're a lot more locked in, it, you know. It's we're ready to play a football game, but outside of that, you know, we're pretty we're pretty close, and we 
you know, we just we can have a good time, you know, you know, have fun even when we're not on the field. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Um, anybody else got a story? You want to share something well, that happened recently? Me, it actually stole my car keys today. I'm not too happy about that. <laughs> I didn't, and I, didn't I, I feel like you he, gave them to me. No, to go back. no, I feel like he framed it as an accident, but he was pretty mad. I walked into the unit leader meeting today, and he was pretty yeah. mad about not going to church as chicken with us. And I feel like we invited him, but I mean, I feel like it hurt a little part in his heart. So he decided <laughs> to take my cart keys. And just Straight didn't end up too well for me. So I, the big question is: is church's chicken is open now, right? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man, I gotta check it out. It's not too far from my house. And so, did anyone make it to Church's Chicken? Oh, it's packed. Packed. like it's packed. So you gotta be there for at least an hour and a half. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. like both sides of the street were filled with cars all the way around, like Walmart and the Plaza by there. Yeah. Uh, well, well, maybe maybe later in the week you guys get down there, or maybe you go there for your. Um, you know, if you guys go down and win, you gotta be your victory dinner down over at Church's right. Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm that is awesome. It. That is awesome, guys. Well, hey man, I, I you know, guys, I I really appreciate you guys coming on here. Um, you know, getting to see your guys' personality and how you guys have come together. Um, obviously, we see that on the field with 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 your success and what you guys have been able to do. So, congratulations on on the undefeated season. And I, I know you're going down to Lincoln. It's like a business trip to you guys, but it's it's clear to see why Betty has been so successful. Um, cause of guys like you and guys up leading the way. So guys, I really appreciate you coming on. I'm going to share this out here before the game and you can, um, you know, show your moms and girlfriends and stuff like that. <laughs> and we'll have, we'll have a lot of fun with it. And I'll be, I'll definitely be down there watching you guys down the lake. And so best of luck to you guys. Um, stay healthy and, um, good, best of luck down there playing against gross, gross Catholic. And, uh, let's see if you guys can't come away with and extend that winning streak. Okay. Right. Well, thank, you. thank you. All right. Thank you. It's available on all podcast platforms. So wherever you listen to your podcast, we're going to be on there. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. That way you get notified of new episodes. Um, Also, we are on YouTube. Um, If you want to find us on YouTube, just uh, search for the Chris Bober Lyman Academy. And be sure to subscribe to our page. Um, Click the notification bell and feel free to comment, share everything that goes on there. Um, We're on social media as well. You know, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We even have a page on TikTok. So the more you can follow us out there, the more we can spread the message of great offensive line play out there. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, be sure to reach out to us through any of those social media channels and spread the word. We want to get offensive line play great here and everywhere across the area.